In this example, we have a random variable x with this pdff of x equals 1 half for x between 2 to 4 and z equals e to the x. And we want to find first the cdf of x. So we haven't started doing anything with our actual transformation yet with our function of our random variable. We just want to find the cdf of x. So we need to go from the pdf to the cdf. So as we look at this, we know that if we have the PDF to get to the CDF, we just integrate. Now I'm going to put an X here because we will be working with multiple random variables, so we always want to say which random variable we're working with. So you integrate just the PDF with a dummy variable, so we'll put in like a T everywhere. So in our case, we would integrate and our bounds would be from 2, but your upper bound is the X because your CDF is always telling you all of the area up to this number, so that's why x is our top limit. And we put in our PDF, which is 1 half dt. And this gives me, once I integrate, 1 half x minus 1. And your limits stay the same for x between 2 to 4. So where's our CDF of x? Now we want to find the CDF of z. And this is when we have to do our little trick to switch variables. And you start by the definition, you say, okay, if I wanted the CDF of Z, to do that, you look at the probability, or by definition, the CDF is the probability that Z is less than or equal to some little specific number, Z. Now, look up above, what do we know? We know that capital Z is equal to E to the capital X, so let's switch that. So, instead of Z, we'll have E to the capital X is less than or equal to little Z. So, right here, let's make ourselves a note, we substitute e to the x for z, and now we'll solve for z, sorry, solve for x, capital X. So if we were to look at this, we want to solve for capital X, we have this e, we want to get it out of the exponential, so we'll take the natural log of both sides. So we'll have x less than or equal to the natural log of z. Now by definition, anytime you're looking at the probability and you have this x is less than or equal to, by definition that is the PDF of x. It's our CDF of x. So this is the CDF of x and what's inside of it, natural log of z. And now, we'll evaluate the CDF of x at the specific value x equals natural log of z. So we put in natural log of z wherever we would have seen x in our original PDF. So 1 half x minus 1. So this is equal to 1 half, and instead of an x, we put natural log of z minus 1. So that's our new CDF for Z. We also need to come over here and find our limits. Because our X limits and Z limits will not be the same. So we'll say, okay, if X was equal to 2, because our limits for X went from 2 to 4. Let's see, 2 to 4. If X is 2, then Z equals E to the X, which equals E to the 2. And if X equals 4, then z equals e to the x or e to the 4. So our final answer for the CDF of z is that it's going to be 1 half natural log of z minus 1 or z between e to the 2 and e to the 4. It might be nice to approximate this e to the 2 is about 7.4 and e to the 4 is about 54.6, just because otherwise I have no reference for what those numbers would be. Now let's find the PDF of z. Well, we know the CDF of z, so let's use that knowledge. So we want to go from the CDF to a PDF. And to do that, you take the derivative. So the CDF, sorry, PDF, it's really difficult to say these, even if you can think them correctly. So the PDF is equal to the derivative of the CDF. 
So in our case, it will be the derivative of our 1 half natural log of z minus 1. Okay. So the 1 half stays there. Derivative of natural log of z is 1 over z. Derivative of negative 1 is just 0. So we just get 1 over 2z. So our answer here is that our PDF for z is equal to 1 over 2z for, once again, z is between e to the 2 and e to the 4. Next, we want to find the expected value of z. And there are two ways you could do this. Let's go ahead and do both. Okay, so we can use PDF of z. So the expected value of z is just equal to the integral of z times f of z dz. And in our case, that would be the integral from e to the 2 to e to the 4 of z times 1 over 2z dz, which is about 23.6045. Okay. So that's the first way you can do it, just because expected value is always the z times your PDF. Or we can use PDF of x and the fact that z equals e to the x. So we could say the expected value of z is really the expected value of e to the x. So that would be the integral of e to the x. So expected value, always put whatever you want in the expected value of, times the PDF. In this case, it would be the PDF of x, since we have an x in there. So this would be the integral from my bounds are 2 to 4, e to the x times 1 half dx. Right, let's make sure that was the correct PDF. 1 half, yep. So let's put this in our calculator which, as it should, gives us 23.6045. So if you've already found the PDF of z, sure, find the expected values in the PDF of z. But if you haven't done it yet, save yourself some work and just say expected value z. Well, that's just expected value of e to the x. And so you just say e to the x times the PDF of x to find your expected value. Let's see. Let's come down to number 5. Let's find the probability that z is between 2.3 and 13.5. So you better go back up and look at the actual bounds of z. Okay. So z is good from 7.4 to 54.6. So can I find it from 2.3 to 13.5? Yes, but I'm not actually going to be concerned about all of that range. So this is actually only going to be, I'm only going to care about going from 7.4 to 13.5 okay, because we only start caring for z at 7.4. When you want to find the probability, actually there's two ways you can do this. You can integrate the PDF of z and that's just what I thought of first so that's what we're going to go ahead and do and then we'll do the other one on number six. Okay. Let's see, so we want to integrate from 7.4 to 13.5, the PDF of z is 1 over 2z, dz, and this gives me 0 0.3. Number 6, we want to find the probability from 10 to 60. So, you could do it the same way, or you could do it using the CDF. So this was the PDF version, now we'll do the CDF. And just remind ourselves, so we want to start at 10, but we can't go all the way up to 60 because, again, we're only good to 54.6. So let's change that to 54.6. So when we look at our CDF, this probability is just equal to the CDF, and you put the big number in first. So 54.6 minus the CDF at 10. And again, let's make sure we put a Z in here to remind ourselves that we are talking about the CDF of Z. So the CDF 
we have is 1 half natural log of z minus 1. So we're going to have 1 half natural log of 54.6 minus 1 minus 1 half natural log of 10 minus 1, which equals 0 0.8487.